all ages. I do apologize for the 30 minute or so delay, but we are finally ready to get underway with this one. It's going to be Niagara versus St. John's University. I will quickly explain what happened. So we had an update on FIFA uh, that needed to be done by Niagara. We got that done. Then they realized they can't get into lobby with each other, but we are finally ready. And Niagara are going to be playing as France. And St. John's are going to be playing as Paris Saint-Germain. I am joined by my ever-loving, ever-beautiful companion, Mr. <laughs> Calvin Unchanged Tucker, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and uh, coming into this game, Niagara are looking for their first win, whereas St. John's are looking to just bring themselves back to level. Uh, a straight bat in 500, as you would say, uh, to... Uh, and this week is what they're they're hoping to get. And, and like I said, Niagara just looking to uh, pull out their first victory of the tournament. But passes like that and allowing Messi to get through in on the box is uh, not how you go about getting a win. No, definitely not. You really need to be careful giving the ball to that man as he's got the ball once again. Looks at the shot blocked by Kimpembe. Comes out to Mbappe, but... Donna, oh, sorry, that's not Donna Roma. That's Hugo Lloris, the general, comes out to clear it up. And another great save from the Frenchman. Yeah, known best for his ability to stop shots and parry them away, but not particularly known for holding on to them. He has, uh, throughout his career, had a few little mistakes where he's uh, not quite parried out uh, into the best places with some chances where people think maybe he could have held on to it. Yeah, I think the thing is, goalkeepers are taught more and more these days to uh, parry it instead of catching it, obviously, as opposed to what they were taught many years ago. A lot of the older goalkeepers still like to go for the catch but they get taught nowadays to, to clear it away palm it away not take any chances but sometimes that can be bad as it can be a striker lurking but either way the early chances are going the way of st john's but can young Kadut do anything about it can he get any chances himself yeah he certainly will be hoping to uh get a good start to this game and, and set up his team at going to that second leg like we said they're uh you know, we've seen it. We've seen an underdog victory today already, so we definitely can't say that Niagara don't have a chance, whether they're winless or not. Uh, you know, Manhattan coming into the game where arguably the most inconsistent side in the tournament, and they defeated the undefeated Marquette today. So uh, that really is the proof that anything is possible, and the proof that you need the. Uh, you know, dreams can come true and, and anyone can win at any moment. Yeah, I agree. I did see a message in chat from Needham saying it's all fun and games until Manhattan played their number one and number two mm -hmm. the entire playoff and win. And honestly, I think that could happen. I think that very well could happen. It depends what style they're going to take in the playoffs. Obviously, in the regular season, they've been like, all right, we'll get everyone play, uh, playing and give them everyone playing time. There is a very early chance. Great save from Hugo Lloris, but the rebound, oh my word, it's gone straight across the box and then hit straight into the post. But yeah, I could see a world in which that does happen. Obviously, that is a scary world. That is a very scary world because as we saw that Manhattan really, they really did dominate Marquette, who we thought were by far the best team in the league. Yeah, they certainly did. And, uh, you know, uh, as I messed up saying earlier, but St. St. John's being the actual, uh, the previous champions, obviously they're, they're looking to just pull back to level which yeah. uh, i'm sure isn't what they were expecting coming into the tournament coming into the tournament we had high hopes for the st john's team so uh obviously they will have high hopes for themselves in in this game just to try and get themselves back into good standing in this tournament and they do just that with an amazing pass through gets Di maria in on goal and Di maria in this psg side in this tournament is looking more and more like he's uh back at real madrid he's just uh he, he's getting a, a ton of assists and a ton of goals and he just quite easily sweeps that one back across goal into the bottom corner there very true the man with two star weak foot doing very well there in that situation and that's exactly what you want to see if you're a st john's fan who they haven't looked they haven't looked tremendously uh good in this competition so far last year they looked incredible but this year they haven't looked too great completely different game completely different game engine as well you do have to remember skills not as big of a Thing in this year as opposed to last year last year it was very much about that surely a red card referee doesn't even give a foul it does give the play on advantage 
But yeah, skills this year aren't as big as last year. Last year was very much, can you chain your skill moves together? Are you good at creating space with Kylian Mbappe and Neymar through skills? There is a chance for Neymar does create the space, but it's a good save from the goalkeeper. And it is all St. John's at the moment. Niagara really are trying to hold off and fend off the opposition, but it is going to be very difficult for them to do so. Yeah, certainly is uh, not not going to be easy for them in this game. As we said, St. John's looking to uh, just kind of bring back some of that confidence in the in their yeah. side and in their ability. And and this is a, a great game to do just that. As I thought, Larice was going to get to that ball. I'll be perfectly honest, but instead, Mbappe beat him to it and just slotted it straight through his legs. And Larice just stood there and and took it. He it didn't even yeah. look like he he made an attempt on that ball. There, I'm not quite sure. What happened to the French goalkeeper who's pulled off some amazing saves so far in this Goalkeepers game? Goalkeepers cannot deal with power in FIFA 22. They cannot. If you fire anything at them with enough power, they will fumble. They will crumble. It is, honestly, it is their kryptonite in this year. You fire a shot at the near post, full power, it goes in. You fire a shot at the far post, it goes in. I have scored shots from 30 yards out just because I have put full power on it and absolutely drilled it into the top corner. They cannot deal with power shots this year. I don't I don't go for finesses anymore. I just smash it as hard as I can. I get into a position where I've got a little bit of room to shoot, just smash it. You can smash it straight down the middle. They'll just dive underneath it or over it. Honestly, power is ridiculous in this year's FIFA. And as you say that, the, uh, the long shot comes out mm -hmm. from St. John's, but it does get deflected out for a corner that... Uh... Corners this year, I will say. Oh, uh, at yep, the start yep, yep, of the tournament. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, okay, okay. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Ah, what, what can I say? Lionel Messi's left foot. What, yep. what more needs to be said? <laughs> yep, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> that that is, is absolutely outrageous. Thank you for that one. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go back to talking about how how bad corners have been for the most part this year. I, I haven't seen many goals scored from them. I've seen more counter attacks given away uh, and balls going, you know, quite quickly down the other end of the pitch, leading in a goal against the side that won the corner than I have. Goal. Like at the start of this year, it was completely different. There were some good goals scored from corners, but more recently, I have I just haven't seen corners be effective. I don't feel like crossing it into the box and winning headers has netted that many goals uh, in yeah. this FIFA. Yeah, but we go into the halftime whistle three nil. Um, what 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 can you really say about this? It's been a bit of a been a bit of a bad showing for Niagara so far. They haven't really had any chances going through. They've conceded three goals, haven't really been particularly defending well. It's just one of those games, unfortunately, where they have been struggling. And it is going to be more of the same because we know just how good St. John's are when they are on a roll. And we will have to see, we will have to see if they can continue this trend and get another three goals in this half. Yeah, and if they if they manage to finish more chances like they did in that first half, especially that messy goal at the end, you know, if you're scoring goals from that kind of range and, and with shots like that, then you really are going to be uh, be looking to be doing well in the game. As it, it's going to be difficult for your opponent to stop you if you can just kind of float one in from anywhere. Yeah, exactly, exactly that indeed, good sir. And we will have to see what happens in the second leg, but. I, if I was a betting man, which I am, I would say it's going to be another good half for St. John's, unless Niagara have something rather, uh, rather crazy to say about it. Yeah, I would, I, I would feel like this is a game that uh, you, you'd bet on in an accumulator just to give you a little added, but it's, uh, it's definitely not one that's going to have incredible odds. Uh, looking at the way this game's being played out so far. I'm not going to get... Because now you've said the word accumulator, I'm like, my ears have pricked up. I'm like, ooh, I love a good anchor. <laughs> but no, we're not going to talk about that too much. Either way, chance for Mbappe is going to fall out to Neymar. But red time finish, unfortunately. Oof. And that's enough for Donnarumma to come out and pick up. We oh, sorry. Lloris to come out. Lloris, yeah. It was so used to just seeing PSG versus PSG at this point that unless it's <laughs> a, a completely random team that doesn't have any PSG players on it, which obviously France does have a fair few... Mm. We uh we tend to just imagine assume that it's going to be Donnarumma in goal as he has been, uh, you know, so incredible for for many of our players in this tournament so far. Yeah. But 
looks like Niagara starting to build a little bit of a chance on this attack here, and they do manage to get the ball in. Into the side netting is what you <laughs> went to say. <laughs> I, I was... You know what? There was a moment of hesitation there because I was not 100% sure. I will say I haven't had my glasses on tonight. I was not 100% sure which side of the post that went. And that's more like it from Larice. Picks it out of the air. Yeah, he exactly what I said he doesn't do in real life. It's, it's literally what I said he doesn't do. And then FIFA's like, you know what? He's going to catch that one. He's going to do Just that. Just to make me look stupid. <laughs> yep. Yep. I mean, St. Peter's here in this game. Oh, sorry. Not St. Peter's. St. Jot. No, I'm just okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just joking. It's you all know right. what? I've read saying the next to each other in my notes. It's yeah. <laughs> I just read oh, the wrong dear. title. It's all right. It's all right. Nobody, nobody blames you. It was a simple mistake. It's all good. But either way, I would, I would like to say that if you hadn't mentioned it, I don't think anyone in the chat was calling me out for being wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's because uh, well no one was probably paying attention to be honest they were just like Saint yep that sounds about right anyway <laughs> Griezmann coming forward he's going to whip it into the back post but no it's going to be a shot across goal comes out to Kante he's going to take on the long shot but cleared away by Sergio Ramos only far as Griezmann Pavard maybe with a long shot we know he's got it in his locker but not going to take the shot on and now Blue Champs can look to Counter attack if he wants one of the old guard for St John's. I think he's. I think he is their main player. I think he's their only player, if I'm not wrong. He may well be looking at the the way they've been playing so far. But yeah, Blue Champs certainly uh, having having a good showing in this game Oof. and uh, another another one where he tries to just whip it across goal. I mean, have a go. It does certainly seem. It's, I, if it works, you know, it, it certainly seems to be his favorite uh, favorite shot type uh, from what I've seen so far in this game. So uh, he's uh, he's that one was close. He's already scored one, so he seems to have it relatively down. And uh, if you've got confidence in shots like that, like I said, it, that's the kind of chance that's hard for your uh, for your opponent to stop because you only really need you know a half chance there to whip it around, and and all you got to do is hope that it catches the keeper off guard. Very, very true indeed. Here comes Mbappe, though. Let's see if he can get a chance. No, uh, what on earth was that? <laughs> I, I was, honestly, I was going to say he's coming in with a chance, but like honestly, what do you even say about that? That was just miles, miles away from anything. Was it a shot? Was yeah, it a it... cross? I don't know. Yeah, not knowing what button he pressed, I'm not quite sure either, because it, uh, it looked like it was kind of somewhere in between, and... And not Meg leading to a foul there with a nice little uh, dummy step over. Ooh. And he is going to go with a Ooh. shot. From... It's always hard to tell if they're what? going in or not because it changes the camera angle. Yeah, you get that little bit of lag as the camera angle changes. And I'm I'm never quite oh. sure. I'm always... A chance for Young Kadu. It's Kings of Komen. Takes the shot. And yes, it's he's lead. got his goal. That's back in the net. Niagara finally get their first goal of the series of the first leg. Young Kadu has done it. He's got himself a goal. And to be fair, it's only two goals in it now. Niagara haven't, haven't looked very good in this leg, but there's always a second leg. If they can keep it close, you never know. Yeah, exactly. It, it's, I mean, as we said, Blue Champs is uh, possibly the only player for St. John's. Uh, so obviously not going to be much of a change up for, for their side, which is quite possibly what's been costing them during this season is that uh, he's had to play every single game, and also you do get a little bit burnout, Ooh. but he's getting a chance from here. And again, that power, like you said, I just saw that with the animation mm. that Hugo Lloris had. He didn't really animate onto the ball at all, no. he just kind of fell down away yeah. from it. He just falls on his back, he doesn't really do anything. That is the the reason why power, power shots are so strong in this game, especially with players that have such high finishing, like my, well, my two strikers. Uh, player of the month, Kareem Benzema, and uh, hero um, Fernando Morientes. Honestly, both of them absolutely incredible. You can you could smash it from wherever you want. They could be facing away from goal, and they could smash it into the back of the net. So, yeah, power is so strong in this game. Yeah, uh, like I said, having you know, you mention it, and now I, I paid attention to the. Uh, the animations there on on a power shot it definitely uh definitely looks like it so mm. the the new meta 
shall we say, is uh, there's an odd time to blow the whistle there from the referee. Yeah, the I fans know, are booing. Uh, yeah, I know. I know in, in, in terms of this match, it won't make any difference, but I'm sure St. John's would have loved to have had that attack keep going to uh, try and rack up another goal on their uh, on their tally going into this uh, aggregate as uh, the way this tournament is played. I'm sure they really would have, as I just want to adjust the score lines. But yeah, St. John's, they looked really good. I, going into this match, I didn't want to say it would be one-sided, but... Obviously, we know what we know about St. John's and Niagara haven't had the best of seasons so far, so it has been very difficult for them. But I do just want to talk a, a little bit about a couple of a couple of players that I use in my ultimate team just before we go to the break. Yeah. So, Fernando Morientes, okay? He has got, in his shooting arsenal, 92 attack position and 92 finishing, 91 shot power. He also has... Oh, he's got really bad curve, but don't take that away from him. He's a very, very, he's a beast. He's only 155k Spanish, uh, Spanish league. He links into anybody pretty much perfectly. You can put him. Ah, uh, yes, the new heroes. Players. Yeah, yeah, the new hero plays. Honestly, he is something else. He is absolutely ridiculous. And then if you didn't hit, if you didn't get him, you wouldn't have him now. But player of the month, Benzema. Oh my word, this player, he's ridiculous at shooting. Both of those big, tall blokes. They just they just finish like it's no tomorrow. Both four star, four star, absolutely ridiculous. But 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 enough about my ultimate team and stuff like that. We do have to get ready for the second game, so we are going to throw it to a very quick break before we get into this one. I promise this break will only be a few minutes, not like the last one. But yeah, we'll throw it to a quick break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes' time so we can wrap up uh, week seven of EGFC season three. So yeah, catch in a few moments' time. Go grab yourself a drink, and we'll be back in a few moments. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the fourth, well technically the eighth and final game of the evening between Niagara and St. John's University. St. John's Esports, not University, sorry. St. John's Esports yeah. currently with a three goal lead, 4-1 on aggregate currently. Niagara got themselves a goal towards the end of the game, but St. John's still have a rather large lead. So we will have to see. Blue Champ said we are a team of five, but today... I happen to be the only player. Well, Blue Champs, it's lovely to have you. We know you, well, I know you are a, a veteran of the FIFA EGF scene, so it's very nice to have you playing and popping off for your team. But that, that, that pass wasn't too popping, I'll be honest. 
<laughs> nobody's getting some uh chelsea game time in which i'm i'm sure he's very happy about get a little little change up so you're not playing the uh the same players all the time that's what i said that playing playing repetitively you can get a little bit of bearing out so he's uh, opted to uh change up and and now he's got a chance for on goal with kai havertz and oh, i thought him Lukaku had uh, been the playmaker there Ooh. and set Havertz up for the goal. But Beautiful dummy from King okay. to Koma. Yeah. Now running through on goal. Sal's the only man to mark him. Has about 60 pace. Whips to the back post. Cleared away, but only far as Rabio, who does take the opportunity, takes the goal. And Niagara get the first Ooh. goal of the game. 1-0. It's now 4-2 on aggregate. Just a two-goal deficit for Niagara now. Maybe St. John's have taken a little, little nap. New Blue Champs is kind of underestimated his opponent here a bit. You know, France versus Chelsea. France have got a big advantage, in my opinion, in terms of teams. I would agree. I would agree. I know not, obviously, you know, France have got a really good defence, not a great midfield, really good attack. But Chelsea, I just don't rate Chelsea's attack in this game. I think Lukaku is good, but as the year's gone on, uh, as well, as the season's gone on, and I've used him in FIFA, he's not that great. But yeah, compared to France, there's just there's, there's no comparison. No, it's uh, it's really not close when when you look at what the teams that are that are being played are, uh, as far as FIFA is concerned. Anyway, obviously, Chelsea do have an incredible team and are doing very well in the league. But FIFA is not always so kind, and FIFA runs on its own different set of rules. Very true indeed. Havertz, Lukaku, back to Havertz, Werner now on the ball. Havertz once more, and St. John's just toying with the opposition, keeping the ball very, very well. Can they find an end product? No, they cannot. It's well defended by Niagara to take the ball away. It obviously, eventually, it took a while, but it's all that matters, as long as they got the ball away. Yeah, that's uh, really all they're going to care about there. They, it, in that kind of situation, it doesn't matter how you do it, as long as the ball gets away, and then you can get down the other end of the pitch and get another chance, but blocked again, and and now Blue Champs, <laughs> the other end, trying to now sprint his way down the pitch with Timo Werner. Both players There's trying to time. abuse this right-hand side of the field. And here we go. Saul on the ball, gives it to Werner. And he's going to potentially look for a cross into Lukaku. No. Plays a bit of an obvious pass, and it will be intercepted. Yeah, not the uh, smart bit player, but now Kante on the ball. Not not the man you necessarily think of when you think of someone carrying the ball up the pitch, but Havertz throwing goal is someone that you think about with getting some goals, but not able to today. That's twice that uh, Blue Champs has been through on goal with Kai Havertz and has not been able to find the back of the net. And these are the kind of chances he needs to be taking to uh, to really you know pull his lead and, and, and take this game away from Niagara. Very, very true indeed. Mbappe got the ball, looks for Kante, can't quite find him this time. As Niagara now, they want to try and extend the lead in this second leg. They want to try and get back into this game fully and they will need to take some risks to do so. They also need to defend and make sure they don't concede any because that's when it gets very, very difficult. A free goal disadvantage would be very difficult to come back from now. Two goals is doable. I think he is offside there, Christian Pulisic. What do they call him? It's not Captain America, is it? Because that was Donovan, I think it was. But I guess he's the new. Um, the new I Captain guess he's America. the new Captain America. Because yeah, I can't off the top of my head think of a different nickname that they have him as. So yeah, I'm pretty sure he is just the the new. Because the Americans are, are as inventive as you can guess with <laughs> naming their best players, they just call him the new Captain America and. I don't know. What, just, what could they call him? It's, Scott, it's, sure Cap, I think Captain America obviously is Donovan's, right? He's, he's yeah. best American player of all time, I think. Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think that's safe to say. I'm trying to think who it could be, what, what his name could be, because I don't think he's really accomplished enough yet to be called Captain America. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest. But Yeah, he's I, not really won anything personally, or... Uh, won anything for America. Oh, no. So Ball's been given away. Lukaku is for on goal. goal. Can he find the back of the net? It's a cheeky chip. Ooh. Lobs it over the goalkeeper and it is very, cheeky. very cheeky and very, very beautiful. It's 1-1 one, one now in the second leg and St. John's have regained their three-goal advantage. Yeah, it is uh, 
That's that's what he'll be wanting. And it, uh, finally taking one of those chances that he does get thrown goal. Unfortunate with uh, the deflection. Not the best bit of play from oh, uh, Niagara as they were looking to get back in this game. And Werner... Oh, <laughs> Werner on that left foot. Now, that's the kind of goal that you do expect uh, Blue Champs to be scoring. And finally, he is mm. uh, taking advantage of these chances that he's getting. And Timo Werner, one of those players that's not been very consistent in real life, but does tend to show out a good performance on FIFA uh, yeah. If you know how to use him. Rumor, rumors around the mill is that Werner will be going to Newcastle United. Apparently, that is a very heavily ah. um, hinted upon rumor. But his release clause is two hundred million. Oh, are Newcastle going to play two hundred million for Werner? I mean, I doubt it. When they can get Haaland for probably the yeah. Same. That's I was I was going to say that is is he a good player and and would. Do they need him? Quite possibly. Is he worth that kind of price tag when no. there are a lot of other players out there that you could get for that? Maybe yeah, before no, he left no. RB Leipzig, he would have been worth that. Maybe. Yeah. But after the couple of seasons at Chelsea, no, I'm sorry, he's been awful. And and I would like I said, I would have to agree with you on that one. That he, he hasn't just uh, he all. he hasn't no he hasn't had the uh, the same level of performance that we expected from him when he joined. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame because obviously such a good player um, coming out of the German league, but never really hit the heights. And there have been a lot of players that have come from the German league that haven't done too well. I think Kavitz has been one where he has done, he's done decently. Obviously, they've won the, the, the Champions League, which is a massive thing. Um, but I, I still don't think that Chelsea have been, well, definitely Werner and Havertz. I don't think they've been, you know, Amazing. I don't think they've been as I good think Havertz as has been good. the price tag said. Yeah, I think Havertz has been good. I think he's been a lot better than Werner. I think Werner's, yeah, I don't know. It's been a weird one. I mean, Sancho as well, a player that's just come from the, the Bundesliga that really, really, ha well, obviously hasn't been performing in training. If not, Oli would be playing him. Um, but hasn't yeah, really had got the to game assume time. So. Hasn't really had the game time to actually play. And it's such a weird situation because he wasn't played in the in the Euros very heavily, which a lot of people were surprised about. And maybe that has led to the situation that we are seeing at Manchester United now. Yeah, and it's it's making people bring a lot of questions. <gasps> what a to, header. Dude, oh, I was... Uh, Lukaku, what? I mean, that's what he's, uh, what he's on the pitch to do is... Uh, be the big target man and as I, as I was saying in the previous game that we don't see many goals from corners the uh, blue champs proves me wrong again what a freak of nature what on earth was that and then and then goes and does a back a couple of backflips as a celebration absolutely eh, just ridiculous casual casual as you like and Kylian Mbappe turns him inside out but tries to go back outside and doesn't really work for him could have just taken the shot on Alt Griezmann does really well great dribbling but no don't finesse in that situation. Full power. Power. Give it the power. Yeah, we have, we, the we've power. seen that that's yeah, we've seen that that's what's been working uh best in, in those close situations is just hitting it full power and the keeper doesn't animate correctly onto the ball. So whenever you get some of those broken animations, you've got to take advantage of it. But going back to what we were talking about earlier with uh players not transitioning over from the Premier League, obviously there's a lot of talks about uh, in, in some upcoming transfer windows, Jude Bellingham making his way over from the Bundesliga back into the Premier League, which obviously he's not played in before, but he's been on a couple of Premier League, or he's been on a Premier League side in, in academy play. It's a good ball in, but Who's yeah. Full? And uh, th there's a lot of, mm -hmm. I can't, I remember I remember looking at it and being like, oh, he he was in like an, a good academy team and then being like, I can't believe they let him go. But, uh was it Birmingham? You played, you played uh, Birmingham? I guess they're not. I thought I it was Birmingham. They, I it's mean, champ cha yeah. Championship? Uh, 2019-20. Yeah. So I think that must have a been... A little bit off. I think I must That's have been the championship. At. Maybe even League One, to be honest. Yeah, but uh, certainly not uh, quite right. The team that I thought of must have been thinking of a different player. Um, but yeah, Jude Bellingham is one of those where they're like people are now questioning with the way Sancho's transitioned over if Jude will have the same problems. That was a green-timed header that Mendy just saved there. Beautiful save, but the ball played back into the middle. Blue Champs does manage to avert the situation, avert the danger from the uh, well, from the box, and 
can look to go on a counter-attack of his own as he's literally dribbling around the France team right now. Pulisic in the middle. Is he going to take the shot on? No. Looks to cut back inside. The goalkeeper movement actually came across for a second, so maybe could have just smashed it at the near post and taken advantage, but maybe didn't quite realise. Lukaku to Havertz. Maybe can cut back in, but really well defended by Kim Pembe and by Niagara. Yeah, but uh, while that's some good defending from Niagara, they are still uh, down a considerable amount here uh, in this game. So it's not looking promising as time is uh, just slowly starting to uh, go against them as they are now, was it, five goals down on yeah. aggregate? Yeah, five goals down on the aggregate score. Unless there's it, some sort of Christmas miracle to be had unchanged, I don't think that... I don't think Niagara are going to be able to come back into this one. And I'm now going to say it's impossible. That is, what is that now? A, a uh, six goal, six goal lead? Yeah. 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 For Niagara. It's 4 1 in both legs. And Niagara, yeah, six goals in 20 minutes, not a chance for me. That is a ridiculous, ridiculous lead. St. John's playing absolutely fantastically dominating the opponent but here does come Niagara can they find the chance they can do they've gotten one back and it will probably be a consolation goal five goal deficit now Oof. yeah I don't know yeah uh, a five goal deficit with the amount of time that's left is I find it hard to believe that they can they can overcome this at this point and unfortunately I do feel like Niagara are going to be coming out of this week still without a victory but St. John's on the other hand will be happy as they are able to pull themselves back to a 50% uh, win rate which is promising it will uh, help their help their standing so far and, and hopefully give them the confidence to keep moving forward and push back towards the uh, the standard that they uh, they would have expected themselves uh, coming into this tournament yeah I think the thing that you've got to look at it as the regular season okay you come out you come out what fifth maybe something like that coming into the playoffs so that's completely different because it's knockout football all it takes is one you know freak game where you get a couple of fortunate goals and you know you could be coming into the grand final against any where anybody can get knocked out that's the thing you know anybody can get knocked out in that in the playoffs you know style of football where it's you know Lots of underdog stories could be made. It is, it is a good thing. It is a nice thing. And especially for a team like St. John's, they're coming into it. They might not be top seed, but they can play good FIFA, and we have seen that. Yeah, they've uh, they've certainly proven that they they have their moments and they can they can oh. pull it out when, when it's required of them. <laughs> As we say that, they go for something a little bit ambitious to say the least but that uh, went certainly in, would have been incredible to see if that would have went in i'd have well i would have just hung up my headset i'd have been like right, i'm retiring i've that would have been absolutely ridiculous i've seen some wicked goals in my time and that would have probably you know taken the uh taken the catch Whew. yeah it, uh, it certainly would have for me i've not seen many people manage to uh bag too many goals off of standing in the middle and doing some keepy uppies it's uh Definitely one I'm waiting on. So uh, yeah, same, same indeed. Let's we'll see. There could be one more chance. He is on side. Kai Havertz does manage to get round the defender. Raphael Varane got Lukaku waiting in the middle. Takes on the shot. Just a few minutes left to go. One minute, and then obviously the additional stoppage time, the added time, and then we will be done. St John's University will be picking up the win. Niagara unfortunately will be taking the loss, but they did have some bright moments throughout the game. It did. It definitely, uh, in comparison to some of the other performances they've had, it's something they can be uh, proud of. It was not their worst, and they held their own for for long moments in this in this game. But uh, uh, unfortunately, it's not enough to come up with the win. And St. John's do manage to uh, pull themselves back to having a positive record, well, an even record, which is uh, I guess still positive. And uh, yeah, it's not looking good so far for Niagara's hopes to be continuing on in this tournament. It is really not. And unfortunately, that does put an end to our all left side wins on our schedule. Um, yes. Unfortunately, uh, Niagara letting the team down. But either way, it's a fantastic <laughs> win for St. John's University. Picking up the win 
thought wasn't rigged win for them. Wasn't rigged at all. No, stop the stop the votes. Oh no, we can't say that on American broadcasts, can we? Oh, dear, we're going to get in trouble now. But either way, if we come over to the schedule, we can have a quick a quick look at how the rest of the games turned out tonight. Fairfield picked up the win versus William and Mary. Iona picked up the win versus St. Peter's. And Manhattan picked up the shock victory versus Marquette in a fantastic game. Niagara, unfortunately, they took the L. St. John's took the W. But this was an absolutely fantastic evening and some absolutely fantastic FIFA was played as, you know, it happens. FIFA is a game of two legs here in EGF. Anybody can win. And today we saw a couple of upsets. But it was good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I did. We had some very good games tonight. Uh, like I said, the, the big upset of Manhattan just pulling out the win against the undefeated Marquette, showing that they do have incredible players while they have been struggling with inconsistency. They definitely didn't struggle with that today. And uh, yeah, some, some very good matches indeed. Very true. And we'll have to see if they can potentially use that, uh, use their number one and two players to potentially try and get a better seed as we go into the later stages of this tournament. However, we are going to be taking, well, this is the end of the stream for a start. Thank you for another fantastic mm -hmm. week of EGF action. But we are going to be taking next week off due to Thanksgiving. Um, so we will catch you in a couple of weeks' time. But as always, I have been George Gene C. Overton, joined by the ever fantastic Calvin Unchanged Tucker. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can follow him at Unchanged underscore cast. You can follow him wherever you can find him Twitter, Twitch, whatever. You can find him. You can also follow me at George. That's me winning charity school. Overwatch events. Oh, yeah. Look at this absolute king over here winning all the charity events. <laughs> you can also catch me at George Overton underscore or at George GNC on Twitch. And you can also follow EGF on at official EGF on Twitch and Twitter. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you have a lovely rest of your week and a lovely Thanksgiving for those of you that are, are American. Um, I don't know if Canada have the United States. Uh, <laughs> Canada have Thanksgiving, but either way, hopefully you have a lovely couple of weeks and we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time. We'll have some more fantastic FIFA action. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace.